Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at river, long and cross profiles, including and making reference to the Bradshaw model. So we'll start off first of all with the river long profile, a line that represents the course of the river and its journey from the top of the river, also known as the source, down to the mouth of the river, which is where your river will meet your sea or your ocean. It is effectively the end of the river journey. So if we, first of all, look at creating a quick diagram of the long profile of a river, you'll notice on my x-axis, I've got distance downstream, and you'll notice on my y-axis, I've got height above sea level. So if I just draw on the source and the mouth, so remember the source is your start of your river and the mouth is the end of your river, we notice that the course of the river from the source to the mouth decreases in height above sea level. If we were to break this down into three sections, more commonly known as your upper course of your river, your middle course of your river, and your lower course of your river, you will notice three distinct shapes. So if you look closely at the upper course of your river, the first section of this graph, you notice that from the source, we have a steep gradient and that is because the river is only in its infancy stage its small stream stage or tributary stage therefore it is coming through mountains and highland areas making its way further downstream if we then consider the middle section of our river the middle course of our river you will notice that the gradient of the river becomes less steep a little bit more plateaued and flatter gradually decreasing in gradient. Then if we move to the lower course, you'll notice that your river ultimately becomes completely near enough flat with a very gentle slope, if anything, as it moves towards the mouth of the river. This diagram is the overall theory of how a river from source to mouth changes in terms of height above sea level. Now let's not confuse the long profile of a river to the cross profile. So if I was to stand in the center of a river channel directly within the middle where the water is flowing and draw a line, imaginary line from one side of the riverbank to the other side of the riverbank and slice across my river, that would give me a cross profile. A bit like slicing into a piece of cake when you then get to see all those lovely layers inside the cake. So if we look first of all at the upper course of our river, you'll notice that the river has very deep valley sides, okay? The river itself is not too deep. It doesn't hold a lot of water. Remember, this is in your upper course of your river. So you have small amounts of water in tributaries, really small streams right now. But because of vertical erosion, the river valley is very, very deep. If we then were to move on to the middle course of the river, and draw an imaginary line from one side of the river to the other side of the river, creating that cross profile, you will notice a completely different shape. Here we can see that the river is actually becoming wider in terms of the river channel. It's holding more water because more tributaries are joining the main part of the river channel. And it is slightly deeper as well because we still have a mixture of vertical erosion, downwards erosion, as well as lateral sideways erosion. And finally, if we look at the lower course of the river, what you will find in the very lowest part of our river course is that the channel is at its widest because of that lateral erosion, but also its deepest because of the sheer volume of water that has joined the main river channel when all these tributaries come together just before the river finishes at its mouth into the sea or into the ocean. So just to develop this knowledge a little bit further, I want to introduce you to this diagram here known as the Bradshaw model. This model is used to describe how a river's features and characteristics change between the upper, middle and lower course of the river as the river is traveling downstream. What we can see in this diagram here is that we have changes in discharge, channel depth, velocity and whether it actually increases as the river travels downstream or whether it actually 
decreases. Now this model can be quite abstract and what I mean by that is it's really hard to visualize if you haven't seen the upper, middle and lower courses of a river. So let's go through a few of the characteristics one by one and I will show you in a picture form how they change from the upper course, middle course to lower course and then ultimately we can see whether they increase or whether they decrease. So let's start off by looking at river discharge. So discharge means the amount or volume of water within the river at a given time. So on all of these pictures, you're gonna see an upper course picture on the left, a middle course picture in the center of the screen, and then in your right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see the lower course of your river. So as we can see here, in the upper course of our river, we have a small amount of water or a small amount of discharge. In our middle course, it has increased, and then in our lower course, it has increased again. So referring to the Bradshaw model here, discharge increases as we travel from source to mouth. Now let's consider erosion. So this wearing away of the landscape. In your upper course of your river, you've got steep valley sides, which are caused by vertical downwards erosion. When we move into our middle course, you have more lateral and vertical erosion causing meanders and oxbow lakes. But when you get to your lower course of your river, you actually get very little erosion because you have more deposition here, more dropping off of sediment, creating estuaries and deltas. Therefore, in relation to the Bradshaw model, erosion decreases as you move from source to mouth. So if we now think about transportation, this movement of sediment in your upper course of your river because of these V-shaped valleys and these huge boulders, the river has a very small amount of energy to move anything. So we don't have a lot of transportation happening in your upper course. In your middle course, we have some movement within our meanders and our oxbow lakes of sand and sediment and pebbles being moved and transported and deposited. But transportation happens a lot in your lower course of your river to create your deltas and your estuaries. So in this case, from source to mouth, transportation increases. Now, just like transportation, Deposition is the same, this leaving behind of material. So in our lower course of our river, this is where you get the most deposition and this is how we get estuaries and deltas forming. So again, this increases as you move from source to mouth. If we consider the load size, so the size of pebbles, rocks, boulders along the course of our river, we can see in your upper course of your river, you've got these huge boulders. I'm not saying you can't get smaller load sizes and small pebbles, but you largely in your upper course see these large boulders. In your middle course then, you see the load size decreasing in size, you have more pebbles, more smaller boulders and rocks, and by the time you get to your lower course of your river, you're looking at your finest particles, your sand, your silt, your clay, still some pebbles, but largely a lot of finer material. So as you move from source to mouth, if you compare these three images, we can see that the load size decreases in size. And finally, if we consider river velocity, velocity meaning the speed of the water and how fast it is moving, meters cubed per second. In your upper course of your river, you've got such small streams, they're like a really slow trickle. By the time you get to your middle course, you have this larger amount of water and therefore increasing velocity and speed. By the time you get to your lower course, you have these huge river channels full of water, really deep. And then you've got lots of these water particles trying to push each other further down the river to get to the mouth of the river. So in reference to velocity here, from source to mouth, you actually have an increase of the speed of the water. Even though potentially on the surface of the water, it might not look like it's moving very fast, deep in the river channel it is. So those are just some examples of river characteristics and how they change from source to mouth. Obviously with the Bradshaw model, there are others to consider like channel depth and channel width. The Bradshaw model is very much GCSE and A-level standard geography, and you might come across this model if you're doing a geographical inquiry or a piece of field work. 
Now, finally, I would like to look at river features from your upper, your middle and your lower course. So if we start off by the source of our river in our upper course, this is where you will find waterfalls and gorges, beautiful and majestic, a lot of vertical erosion has occurred to create these magnificent riverland forms. And we also have V-shaped valleys in your upper course of your river as well, where we've got these steep valley sides that has been carved out for, for thousands of years. If we move into our middle course of our river, this is when you will start to see the river meandering or these bends in our river known as meanders. And you might even see some oxbow lakes. You'll also see, if you relate back to the long profile of the river, the river is getting less steep and it's becoming a more gentle gradient. And moving into your lower course of your river, you have these flat valley sides either side, known as floodplains. They might also come with embankments immediately either side of the river, known as levees. And floodplains don't always look like this. They can sometimes look like this because they naturally are there for the river to overflow in flood season when the discharge is high. And this is why in geography we always explore the effects of building on floodplains and the risks it poses to people. And at the very end where your river meets your sea or your ocean, you have estuaries. So found along the coast where the river meets the sea or the ocean and in some particular locations if the conditions are right you can have deltas beginning to form which create these beautiful aerial images like the one you're seeing on the screen now due to the deposition of sand and sediment. So just to kind of sum up this whole theory of how rivers change from source to mouth, looking at the long and cross profile. I've summarized a few characteristics in a little table for you here from erosional processes to transportation processes to load size through your upper, middle and your lower course. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.